I made this fun handout Friday night late before our training started on Saturday. So this one is about working the room. I was actually trying to come up with like a midterm exam or some just start on something for a future test for you guys. But I was like, you know, this is really fun. So I discovered, let's, let's talk about how to work the room. Working the room means getting off of your mat and working around the room, meaning you're walking around, or you can call it walking the room, or demoing from certain places on, from the room instead of staying stuck on your mat. As a yoga teacher, you are there for your students and to have them get the most benefit and, and greatest experience in their yoga practice, it is not your practice. So it is not your time to work on your flexibility or your strength at the front of the room. You are not there to be a, it's not an Ashley show. That's me. It's not an Ashley show. It's not a yoga teacher show. It is a, a, a time for the students to come into themselves. It's a themselves show or whatever you want to call it. But so you shouldn't be stuck on your mat the whole time. When you start out, a good rule of thumb is 80% on your mat and 20% walking around. In time, maybe you'll get up to you know 20% on your mat and 80% walking around. Walking around and demoing from different places of the room is harder. It's more challenging because you're multitasking. You're talking while you're walking, while you're thinking about where you have to be and where the students' eyes are. So this is just a start. This, we got all, everybody got in, uh, set up as if we were in a class and had this in front of us and we practice a pose. If you were doing a sun salutation A as a teacher, where would you be set up? And on here I have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So everybody would be looking at the teacher. In a sun salutation A, the example, you would probably be at the front of your, at the front of the room on your mat for at least the first one. Otherwise you could be walking around, but it could be all of the answers. So the most general answer would be B, the front of the mat. If we're doing a warrior two with your right leg forward, arms open, warrior two, where would you be? So everyone's in warrior two. You can kind of visually, spatially think about this. If you're doing a warrior two, right arm is forward, your gaze is likely to be in the front corner of the room and it would be, you can, I don't know if it's right or left, but on this, it would be A, letter A, so going through each of these poses, and if you have struggle, if there's a pose not on here and you want to think about it, you can add it yourself. Uh, and I do have a little key at the bottom. So R means right leg forward for standing poses. Left means left leg forward for standing poses. For any seated and twist, and if it doesn't have to deal with the legs, it means we're turning to the right for R or turning to the left for R. So in a side plank, right arm reaches up, you're turning to the right, that's side plank right, turning to the right. So go through this worksheet and get a feel for just thinking about if you wanted to demo one of these poses, where would you be, where would your students gaze, your, their eyes be or have a tendency to be if you're heading into the pose? Not while you're in it, but just before. Where do people have to look to see you to get into it? So if you're already in the pose, there's no need for them to see you because they're in it, they know what they're doing. But think about that right before you get into this pose, where would they be looking? Got it? Awesome. So before they get into this pose, as you transition into it and into that pose, where should you stand? Where, should, where could you be? And there might be more than one answer. You might have like A and or D, uh, C or E, or you can even add on here, I added H, the back of the room. You won't often be at the back of the room, but um, you could also be in the middle of the room. But we're just assuming that you're just working the perimeter for now um, because that's the easiest thing to do when you're in a classroom setting so you're not bumping into people. So go through this worksheet, have fun with it, and then just get your mind thinking about where we would be placed. We're going to use this concept of working the room with the five pose sequence that we're creating. So when you teach this the next time, think about where you would be located in your five poses. So our homework with our five pose sequence that we're writing out completely is to also know where you would be located to teach these poses. Some of you, if you do a seated pose sequence, might be at the front of your mat, on your mat the entire time, and that's okay. 
If you're doing a standing pose sequence or want to challenge yourself a little bit, doing something a little bit more flowy, you may want to move from side to side or mark down where you would be in the room. So when we practice it, you can also read your sheet of paper or say your script and be in that place where you can demo. Hope that was understandable. Enjoy working the room and have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.